Oh, hey Frank. I'm glad to see you're finally relaxing. Relaxing? It's like 200 degrees outside. I've been frying for two hours. My head feels like it's gonna explode, like I'm gonna have a heat. Yeah, I'm really relaxing. The point is, I definitely do not want to be out here until I construct some sort of immaculate cooling system or pay some Russian girls to fan me with banana leaves. I understand the importance of vitamin D3. That's why I'm out here. And that could be talked about for hours and hours and hours. Immune benefits, neuromuscular system roles, playing a factor in all cells in the body, mineral metabolism. And I've done several videos explaining that. So the main focus here is not convincing someone about the importance of vitamin D. It's practicality, how to get vitamin D. Not as simple as just going out to the beach, laying out in the sun. The UVB index peaks around 12 to 1 p.m. depending on how late in the summer it is. So if you're not outside during the peak UVB period, you're not getting UVB and UVA rays. UVA rays do not give you vitamin D. They simply just color your skin. And that's actually what tanning beds are predominantly made of. And you know, it's not that UVA is bad and that coloring your skin doesn't have benefits because it certainly does. Activating the melanin receptors, you definitely feel good. You're just not getting that large amount of vitamin D that humans are meant to have. Realistically, you know, at least maybe 70, 80, 90, 100 days out of the year. You know, full body sun exposure during those peak times. That's what we would naturally get. Uh, so today the peak UV index was around 1 p.m. You could Google this, there's a bunch of phone apps. So my goal was, you know, to get into work early, leave around 11, get home by 11, 30, 12, and be outside, you know, one or two hours before the peak UV and one or two hours after the peak UV so that if I spend, you know, two or three hours in the sun, I'm maximizing the vitamin D and I only have to do it, you know, three, four, five days per week. Now, the more free time you have, the better. And it's not realistic for everyone. But, you know, if you think, oh, I have light skin, I don't tan, I'm going to burn the sun, I'm Irish, I'm a ginger. I know people have told you to address lifestyle factors, to reduce omega-6, to do this, to do that, and you will eventually tan. You know, if you do get out earlier in the season, like May, which I mean, it's already passed, but you know, you have to acclimate your skin to the sun. You can't just go outside and peak UV in the middle of summer, pale as a ghost. I mean, you can if all the factors are right and you should burn, which will then turn into a tan. But the key factor that I figured out is using supplemental vitamin D somehow speeds up those receptors in your skin that darken it. So, you know, I remember when I was trying to tan for like two, three, four, five weeks, that's how long it would take me, almost two months, just to get a base tan. But when I supplemented vitamin D, whether it's orally or rubbing it on your skin, it actually accelerated the tan so much that I got a deep color in two weeks. So I think a big factor for people that think they can't tan, have super pale skin, is to really get that supplemental vitamin D to help accelerate the tanning process. Now, if you're one of those people that think, oh, the sun's going to give me skin cancer, I need to use tanning lotion, I've spoken about that as well. The sun is simply a catalyst for skin cancer where all of these other modern lifestyle factors are actually the cause of it. And tanning lotion is one of the worst things you could use. It's got so many chemicals in it. And if you look up any study, they have never shown that tanning lotion actually prevents or is associated with lower levels of cancer. It's actually the opposite. People that use tanning lotion have higher levels of cancer. Uh, you know, it could be a nutrient problem. You might need more B vitamins. You might need some magnesium K2. Magnesium's a big, big one. And I think everyone should be supplementing, you know, three, four, 500 milligrams of magnesium a day. So, you know, you have the RDA guidelines for stuff like that and vitamin D, which are simply far too low. You know, the recommended dietary allowance is telling you that you need 400 IU of vitamin D per day. That's actually closer to 1% of what you need than it is to 10% of what you need. Uh, it's really, really crazy that people say, oh, just go outside for 15 minutes in the winter and get some sun on your hands and face. It's comical. It's comical. And there isn't really a lot of research on how much IU or how many units of vitamin D you're actually getting while being in the sun for the day, but it's tens and tens and tens of thousands. So when people say, oh, you shouldn't supplement 
this much vitamin D, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. It's really, to me, a scheme to keep people unhealthy because unlike a lot of these other supplements that people take, or as the amounts do tend to be unnaturally high, vitamin D seems to be you know, shot short. You know, we're going too low. Uh, so the vitamin D supplement can be used in ways to not only accelerate the tanning process, but you know, if you can't get outside in the sun, if you have a severe, severe deficiency, that is something you can use. I have both vitamin D, vitamin K2, magnesium, basically everything you need on organsupplements.com. Uh, on the topic of the tanning beds, I like using them in the summer to even out my tan because usually my face, my hands, and my feet aren't as tan as the rest of my body. So what I'll do is I'll put on like a sweatshirt or like long johns and I'll go in the tanning bed for 10 or 15 minutes and that'll even out the base color. And if you just don't have time, going to the tanning bed can help make you feel good, but we have a whole video on tanning beds explaining uh, the pros and the cons. And some more practical stuff. You know, I'm out here baking. It's like, it's hot as hell. I have a mild headache. It's not that bad. But this is a cot I purchased off Amazon. I think it was like 60 or 70 bucks because there's just so many ants and bugs on the ground. Otherwise, I would like to lay in the grass. That would be nice. I think this is still grounded uh, because this, this is aluminum. So if I'm in contact with this aluminum base, I should be grounded. So when you're in the second floor of a building or when you're wearing rubber soled shoes, you're not grounded. It's, it's a big part of the reason why people are so unhealthy today. And I have another video, I don't have a video on everything, but on grounding, explaining that in depth, why it's important. But you definitely wanna be grounded when you're outside, ideally in a low EMF environment. I was always getting headaches on that side of my house because my neighbor had very high Wi-Fi EMF devices somewhere in his household. Now I'm over here by another house, by my house, so you know the EMF levels are still moderate to high, but not horrible enough that I just have a pounding, pounding headache. So if you don't feel good when you're tanning, if something's off and you're grounded, then I suggest you know driving to a park, driving to a field, going somewhere kind of you know out in the middle of nowhere, turning your phone off, relaxing. And the beach actually seems like one of the worst things. I remember as a kid. When I went to the beach, I would have a headache the whole time driving there, the whole time on the way back, the whole time I was there. And I think the beach in general is a pretty high Wi-Fi EMF environment. On the highway driving there, you're surrounded by people. So that's a big factor that people don't really consider when they're outside tanning. And you know, if you're outside, it's 95, 100 degrees, and you're in the sun, your body's pretty stressed. And the Wi-Fi EMF is what's gonna kind of tip that scale and give you a headache and make you feel really, really, really crappy. So despite being out here for you know two and a half hours, I only went inside a couple times to cool off, have a couple sips of water, sit in the AC for a few minutes. But it's just really hot today. It's not windy at all. You could take an ice pack out. You know, if you rest an ice pack on your neck or on a part of your body while you're tanning, then you should be fine. Uh, if you take like a fan outside or some mist, that's a good option too. But if you don't have filtered water in your hose, you probably don't want to mist your body with chlorine or fluoride for for two or three hours. I used to do that. Uh, but that's why I stopped doing that. So the sun is over there. So what I'll do is I'll lay, you know, like this for maybe 10, 15 minutes. I'll flip over. I'll turn my head to the left, you know, for five or 10 minutes. And then I'll switch over to the other side. And I'll turn my head facing right so that, you know, my face is always towards the sun. And I'm always towards the sun. So I'm tanning as efficiently, as evenly as possible. I guess one final thing to touch on is the myth that you can get enough vitamin D from foods, which is absolutely not true. This definitely deserves its own video. When people say like, oh, you could drink raw milk or you could eat salmon or that, it's not even close. It's not even close. That should not be said under any circumstance whatsoever. I don't know who started that myth, why people say that. I think that ties in with the RDA being so low and people thinking you can get enough. It's just, it's just bad. So. You know, I guess to summarize this, you know, most people have spent you know, dozens and dozens of years of their life not getting enough sun. So in order to really, really get your health back and start feeling a lot better and how you should be, it could take one, two, three, four years of tanning and supplementing vitamin D. That's how long it takes. And, and by no means is that a long period of time compared to the context of you know, how long you've been living and how long you've been having a negative lifestyle. So you know, nature, High quality food, sun, air, water, all of that stuff has a way of healing people very rapidly. It just depends on how long you were following an unhealthy lifestyle and how extreme that was. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me today. 
if you could please drop a like on the video subscribe so that youtube unsubscribes you next week and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos uh, one big thing i forgot to touch on was uh, right now it's actually nice sunny outside no clouds but they do spray trails in the air and one of the purposes of those trails which i made a video on last year around summer when i was irritated is to block vitamin d is so people don't get that sun so what you'll be doing is you'll be laying outside you'll see them spray a trail in the air which is condensation from airplanes and then within 10 or 15 minutes the sun will be completely blocked by clouds so it does get a little discouraging when it's not a clear day outside or when it's rainy and you can't tan uh, so you know with that going on there's definitely fewer and fewer days we can actually get some vitamin d hopefully this year's a little better than last year i'll see you guys tomorrow